Hello, good morning. I hope that you're all well and that you've had a good week. I find myself saying this so often, but my week has just gone by in a whirlwind. I just don't know where the hours in the day go to. And it's not because I waste them, because I am very active and make the most of all my time. I think it's probably because I have so much I want to squeeze into every day. Um, this week I've been back and forth to my framers three times and my photographers twice. Um, we've got some lovely new releases coming out um, you know, in, in the weeks and months ahead. It's really very, very exciting. Um, Monday night I finished um, Jessie Anderson and um, I collected some backing board for her because I want to um, stretch and lace her this week together with some other samplers. Now I had an email from a needle worker asking me about this backing board. Well this board is um, acid free, it's suitable for conservation work, it's white on the one side and brown on the other um, and it is three millimeters thick now I got to check on that in inches hey Siri what's three millimeters in inches zero point one two inches um, so that's what I use and um, I've been very pleased how this works for me um, before we talk about the samplers, I just want to answer one other question that I've had. And it is, do you feel there is a correct side of linen to use? And if so, how do you determine which side it is? Well, for me, I'll use whatever sides I want. I think the correct side is the side that visually appeals to you. Now, if you um, use, say, um, Swigart, in flax it's the same color either side so there's there's nothing to choose from between the two sides but if you use some over dyed linen um, you might want to choose the side where the mottling or the grunginess um, falls right for the sampler that you are stitching now um, this linen There is really, even though this is over dyed, because it's not um, grungy, there's very little difference between the two sides. There is the slightest um, difference on the sides, but it's not so prominent as a piece like this. Now, when I was um, uh, doing this little um, cushion, I almost fussy cut my linen. I chose um, some of the really sort of grungy areas uh, to fall exactly where I wanted them on the, uh, the sides of the pin cushion because I wanted this pin cushion to look old and well used. I'm really pleased with this. It smells delicious. It's ground walnuts that are scented by lavender. And I finished this last night. Um, I had a lot of ground walnuts to clean up afterwards. Um, I really, really enjoyed doing this. Um, Dorchi Sampson stitched three samplers. So these are my models for two of them. So she stitched in 1905 her little primer and then the following year she stitched this darling little sampler so um there they are they will be released later in the year most probably i've still got to stitch um the one sampler uh, to be framed because i want to frame these three together so this is her third sampler Honesty is the best policy, which is very, very true. Um, I use this for the top of her pincushion. And I took the sides of the pincushion, 
from her primer. Now she doesn't say she's 13 in her primer, but she says she's 14 in her sampler. So I knew that she was 13 when she stitched her primer. There's her name. And um, that is um, the date that she stitched um, that sampler. And I just incorporated that in. And the bottom I left blank, but I put the little border on. So this is really super and it's a lovely weight and I've got some nice pins to put in it when I get my uh, goodies out of Linda's suitcase. So anyway, I've got to stitch this little sampler in its own right to have it framed to go with those. Um, that linen on uh, the two samplers on the pin cushion is the new linen coming out towards the end of the year from uh, Tabby Cat Linens. Okay, so um, this week we had some beautiful silks come for a new sampler that's going into production. Isn't that a beautiful palette? Really, really gorgeous. And the sampler this is for is just amazing. Very different. Um, and um, these are going off to Leona, who's going to be model stitching the sampler. And um, it was charted by uh, Sandra. That's the linen. It's Muddy Duck from Tabby Cat Linen, which is um, a lovely warm colour. And this is such a good match to so many um, antique samplers that we reproduce. So that's going off in the post tomorrow morning. Um, this week we released a darling little sampler. Margaret Beatty. Isn't that adorable? This sampler was stitched by Boomer and it was charted by Sandra. And it is, it, it's just, it makes my heart sing when I look at this sampler. The colours are just delightful. This is a beautiful palette. Um, the sampler was stitched on Jersey Cream from Legacy Linen and it just showcases all those colours so well. The sampler is stitched in cross stitch over two threads with the exception of the name which is in cross stitch over one but just look at that beautiful font that she chose. Margaret Beatty, female school, Ardrosen, again my Scottish pronunciation is not very good. Um, somebody commented about female school sounded as if it was um, sort of uh, an upmarket school. Poor little Margaret Beatty. Um, she had a very rough start in life. Um, female school does sound as if it might be sort of upmarket, but it wasn't. Um, we know a lot about Margaret because on the back of the sampler, Margaret's story was told by her great granddaughter, E.B.G. Allison, and she wrote out um, her grandmother's, her great grandmother's story on September the 10th, 1998. And I think that's just so lovely that um, one of her descendants cared enough about their great grandmother's needlework um, to write a story out and to put it on the back of her sampler so that her memory was kept alive. Um, we know that Margaret was called Maggie by her family um, and she was born on March the 4th, 1854 at Saltcoats in Ayrshire and she was the natural daughter of Margaret Newell, an Irish farm servant. Her father is unknown but it could have been Peter Benson, a dock labourer, who Margaret Newell later married. When Maggie was two years old, she was adopted by James Beatty and his wife, Barbara Hunter, who had no children of their own. Um, Maggie grew up and became a domestic servant. And at the age of 19, she married William Old um, in 1873 at her parents' home. William was a 24 year old plumber from Newton of Ayr and uh, their first child was born the following February. So um, she was obviously um, pregnant when she got married. 
The couple went on to have 12 children, 10 boys and two girls, including one pair of twin boys. Um, their two daughters were the 10th and 11th of their children. So she had to wait a long time to get any sort of help with that family. Um, we know that William built up a prosperous plumbing and electrical business and he became a member of the Air Council and a Bailey of the town, so he was a respected person. Um, Maggie and William um, lived to quite good ages. William was 77 when he passed away and Margaret was 82. Um, she died in 1937. It's so lovely to have um, the history straight from the family. Just made that sampler all the more special to us. Now, we fell in love with this sampler because of this scene, the little girl feeding her rabbits. Um, it's just absolutely delightful. It really, really is. Um, this sampler would be so lovely for a child's bedroom. Um, if you're thinking of doing a sampler for um, a daughter, a granddaughter, a niece, um, or you know, somebody who's had a baby girl. This is a perfect sampler for that. It's just so delightful. I think that Maggie must have loved her adoptive parents because she incorporated their initials on her sampler. Um, really pretty. The colours, that green and pink together, it's so fresh and these beautiful blues, really, really pretty. Um, a lot of people have already started this sampler um, and that's one of the beauties of um, PDF downloads. You know, you can see something, you like it, you can download it, you could be stitching it within a few minutes of purchasing the pattern. Um, now, the... Um, chart comes in booklet form or as an instant PDF download. Um, our, the booklets are with our distributors and with stores, so you shouldn't have any problems securing a printed booklet, either from needlework stores around the world or from the Hands Across the Sea Samplers website. Um, the palette of colours are so beautiful on this sampler. There's 23 colours and um, you will only need um, one spool or skein of each colour with the exception of two uh, colours if you're using Soir d'Arger on 28 or 32 count. Other than that, it's only one spool or skein of DMC, uh, Soir d'Arger or Soir 103. Um, the, um, hold on, the stitch count is 153 by 220, so she's not a huge sampler. Um, as I said before, we use Jersey Cream from Legacy Linen. Um, if you were to stitch this little sampler on 28 count linen, the design size would be 10.93 by 15.71. If you were to stitch her on 36 count linen, she would be 8.5 by 12.22. And if you were to stitch her on 46 count linen, she would be 6.65 by 9.57. A really sweet size. Now, the sampler, um, it's not suitable for stitching on aid just because of this over one cross stitch at the bottom, but the rest of the sampler is suitable for stitching on linen. So what you could do is just admit this little bottom uh, line and then you can use um, Ada for the sampler. Um, if you would like to stitch her on Ada and incorporate the girl's name, um, if you contact me, we'll see if we can come up with a plan of maybe using some of this other space for her name. Um, adorable. And I was just so grateful that her great granddaughter had recorded that information on the back of the sampler. Um, I have to say to everybody, thank you so much for um, your love of this little red sampler. Um, I just can't believe how many people have 
downloaded the PDF or purchased the booklet. And I've been hearing from so many people that their grandmothers used to say, waste not, want not. Um, because my Nana used to say that, that's what really drew me to this sampler and made me want to actually stitch this one myself. Um, I suppose really that the war generation um, or the people who, you know, sort of grew up in World War One or World War Two, uh, they literally did have to uh, waste not, want not. So thinking about it, I'm not surprised that many people's grandparents lived by that motto. Um, it's so beautiful. I love this sampler. Um, it's a very quick video this morning. Um, I don't like to sort of rabble on if I haven't got anything interesting to say. And I never know um, how much to talk about my personal life. Um, sometimes I see comments um, that um, people don't like listening to floss tubers rabble on. And then I get comments saying that you sort of enjoy having glimpses into my life. Um, my life um, revolves around my husband and my dogs and then needlework. Um, I'm probably a very boring person if you don't want to talk about dogs or needlework. Um, this week, um, my husband and I, we went out and had a lovely, lovely lunch on August 31st. It was actually the anniversary of when Ray fell and broke his neck in three places. Um, we were just so grateful that he pulled through that. Um, you know, September of last year, September, October, it was such dark months for us. Anyway, we went out and we celebrated. We had a lovely lunch. It was a beautiful day. Um, and then when we got home, um, we could see there was something wrong with Bertie's eye. Now, I know there was nothing wrong with his eye the night before, because before my dogs go to bed, I always give them a thorough check and um, a fuss and a smooth. It's part of our routine. Um, I like to check them for any sort of um, cats, ticks. Um, or dirt on them because they do actually sleep on our bed um, and his eye was absolutely fine and I am 98% certain that his eye was fine in the morning. Um, but anyway, when we got home, we could see there was something wrong with his eyes so we dashed to the local vets and we were so lucky. Um, the last appointment of the day was free and the vet that was on duty was the ophthalmic specialist of the practice. Um, anyway, she abraded his eye and gave us um, some medication and they didn't have all the medication so I had to shoot off to their other, uh, their main branch, their animal hospital to get it. And then we went back on Friday and Bertie had to have a little operation on his eye, bless him. Um, we go back to the vets tomorrow, so that's my big focus at the moment is getting Bertie's eye well. I get so squeamish with eyes. Um, and having to put drops in eyes, it, 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 it's not very nice. Anyway, that is a little glimpse into my personal life. Um, I hope to be back next Sunday with um, lots of uh, new things to show you. Um, I'm going to be starting a new sample. Well, I'm going to stitch this one. That will just probably take me an evening, maybe a tad more time going into tomorrow but I have a new sampler to start to stitch it's a Scottish sampler um, we do like our Scottish samplers at Hands Across the Sea samplers anyway until next week stay safe stay well bye bye